today we're going to look in closer detail at the huge contribution that Huguenot craftsmen made to the production of luxury items in silver uh, in this great metropolis. There were Huguenot goldsmiths attached to the original French church in Threadneedle Street uh, in the mid 16th century. And there were other specialist gold and silversmiths uh, as part of that community in the early 17th century. So when in the late 17th century, hundreds of French Protestant craftsmen left France to avoid religious persecution, they included many goldsmiths. And today we're going to be looking at the work of just two of those goldsmiths represented in the Museum of London collections. But just to bring home the context, the welcome that the established Huguenot families were able to provide to the newcomers, we're going to look first at a silver tankard that was presented to Benjamin Duquesne, member of an established Huguenot family, uh, the Le Quens, who came to London from Flanders in the 16th century. By the 1670s, Benjamin Duquesne was serving as treasurer to the Bridewell and Bedlam hospitals maintained by the City of London that provided shelter for those with mental health challenges at Bedlam, then on the site of London Wall, the present site adjacent to the Museum of London, and Bridewell that catered for uh, unruly uh, and impoverished adults and neglected children. So these flagons are inscribed with uh, Benjamin Duquesne's name and we know from his will in 1690 that he left these, this was one of a pair, to his two nephews. But now we're heading to the west end of London, to uh, Pall Mall, to the premises of David Guillaume, a Huguenot goldsmith who came from Metz and established his workshop and shop in uh, St. James's, close to the court. He attracted royal patronage and in 1714, Caroline, Princess of Wales, commissioned a set of silver communion plate for the French Protestant Church in Port Arlington in Ireland, where it still remains today. This catered for retired Huguenot soldiers who had supported William III's military campaign at the Battle of the Boyne uh, in 1690. David Bion took on his own son, also David, as apprentice. In fact, we know that in the 17 teens, David Vion the Younger went back to Metz to see if he could reclaim family property. David Vion's daughter, Anne, also picked up the principles of the goldsmith's trade and uh, married her father's apprentice, David Tanqueray, in 1717. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Dinah Winch, director of the Huguenot Museum in Rochester, Kent, who will show you a very special piece of silver made by the first woman Huguenot goldsmith, Anne Tanqueray. Here's Dinah. This source book from the Huguenot Museum collection is one of a pair by Anne Tanqueray, you can see it's double lipped, which was a new and rather short lived shape in English silver. Like the soup tureen, the double lipped silver sauce boat was a form introduced by Huguenot goldsmiths to serve the new sauces that were becoming fashionable, thanks in part to Huguenot cooks. An elite household would probably have had a set of four to place around a table set in the French manner. 
In the early 18th century, to have a French cook was the height of fashion and a welcome job opportunity for Huguenots. The celebrity chef, Vincent La Chapelle, ran a cookery school in Mayfair. He published recipes in English and French during the 1730s and 1740s for anchovy sauce, Italian sauce, and parsley sauce, among others. On the base, you can see Anne Tanqueray's mark, which includes a sun and a scallop shell, which also occur in her husband's mark. But in her case, they're contained within a lozenge, which indicates a woman goldsmith. Anne registered her mark for both sterling and Britannia silver on her husband's death. The other piece we're going to look at, uh, apart from the David Viome uh, tea kettle and stand used in the service of uh, tea, which was a fashionable ritual. Um, the spirit lamp in the stand of the tea kettle would have helped to keep the water uh, hot for filling up the silver teapot. But again, reflecting the fashion for new drinks, the coffee pot made in 1712 by Augustine Courtauld marks the presence of the first of three generations of goldsmiths. The Courtauld family came from the Ile d'Oran, adjacent to La Rochelle, uh, a Huguenot stronghold. And Augustine Courtauld joined his father, who was a wine cooper and wine merchant working in Little Newport Street. Augustine was apprentice to Simon Pantin, part of another Huguenot goldsmith dynasty originally from Rouen. And in due course, Augustine set up his own workshop adjacent to St. Martin's Lane in the parish, St. Martin's in the Fields, in Chandor Street. And in fact, his premises can be seen in Hogarth's print, The Enraged Musician. In due course, Augustine Courtauld took on his son, Samuel Courtauld, uh, as apprentice. And eventually, Samuel Courtauld moved back to the city in fact, Samuel's sister, Anne Courtauld, also married a goldsmith, John Jacob. And the Huguenot Museum in Rochester has recently acquired portraits of John and Anne Jacob. Interestingly, in the 1780s, John and Anne Jacob wrote their wills in French, demonstrating that a hundred years after the Courtauld family was first established in London, they were still speaking French at home. Samuel's wife, Louisa, who was uh, a member of the Augier family, leading silk weavers with a house in Spittle Square, also spoke French to her grandchildren at the end of her life. Finally, I'd like to look at this wonderful dress sword of 1800, made by James Morrissey, a goldsmith of Huguenot descent, working in Denmark Street, Soho. This was presented by the City of London to uh, Horatio Nelson in 1800 to celebrate his victory of the Battle of the Nile. And it is appropriately decorated in enamel with symbols of Britannia victorious, a crocodile representing the Nile and the coat of arms of the city of London. This sword cost over 200 pounds. Uh, and we know that James Morrissey uh, made tremendous profits from his business as a sword cutler and enameler of uh, freedom boxes for the City of London uh, and retired, dying in a ripe old age in 1815 in St Pancras. But I leave you with the thought that the Courtauld family who established a dynasty of silversmiths and then continued in the textile trade founded the world famous textile company Courtauld PLC and eventually 
uh, through Samuel Courthold in the 20th century, the Courthold Institute of Art, thus making a lasting contribution to the culture of art on a global scale. Thank you.